Hi, I'm Claire Renee Coner and I'm a woman that's transgender. There seems to be a discrepancy between what the insurance company, the hospital, and what my gender psychologist believes are medically necessary treatments for people that are transgender. When will my gender dysphoria diagnosis and WPATH requirements be considered medically necessary enough for me to receive the care that I need? Thank you. Hi, Claire Dahl. Thanks for calling in. So the biggest thing, when I do surgery for patients, like the first thing I do, I tell them, look, we're gonna have to change the sex on your forms to get this approved by the insurance company. And after your surgery's over, all your surgery that you want to have, we can change the sex again. So we just have to change the sex to get you through the insurance process. And once we do have you do that, then we can change it back. I'm wondering how we decouple the idea of physical sex with gender as it relates to healthcare. As a trans woman, I'm gonna need prostate exams. I have friends of mine who are trans men who are gonna need gynecological care, but our insurers don't necessarily wanna cover that because we're the wrong sex. What do you think is the best way to approach that? Thank you. If you have any type of gender like surgery, your doctor, like I will write a letter for you, notarize mm -hmm. this letter, and you can take this letter to get all of your yes. passport and driver's license, social security cards changed. So that's kind of how it works. I do, I do a hysterectomy on a trans man. I say, hey, I give him a letter to say I had, you had gender reassignment surgery done by me, and then he can take that to get all of the names in But the yes. problem we Change. often but. run into, again, when we're looking at the cycle, it, it, many of the reasons individuals do not have surgery, whether top or bottom, is l not, lack of ability to afford this. Yes. All right, and so then they're tethered to their insurers that they receive either via work or via uh, the government. So a hysterectomy, which is removal of the uterus and the cervix, you know, we could do it for various different reasons, endometriosis, chronic pelvic pain, irregular bleeding, but all of those are medically indicated. So regardless if they're a trans man or not, if they qualify, we can do the surgery and it's still part of your gender reassignment. Good morning, doctor. Uh, my name is Ruby Carrado and I run a transgender agency in Washington, D.C. And like myself, many transgender women, particularly of color, given the negligence of the medical system, uh, we're not able to access transition-related care in our youth. And many of us, like myself, ended up having to resource to underground uh, treatment. Um, I myself have five liters of silicone in my body that is supposed to be in plain. And I, like many of my sisters, um, have begun um, seeing the consequences and feeling the consequences of this um, silicone in our body. What recommendations do you give to providers and doctors to also include in the conversation about transgender-related care? Uh, how to deal with the consequences of the treatments that are now affecting our bodies and risking our lives? I've seen one of my um, girls get uh, blood clot in the lungs from hormones. I've seen like butt infections from hormones, and just horrible things like facial things that are done, you know, black market things, terrible, terrible, terrible. You should not be doing these things.